Hi there, it's Nicole for Honey Bee Stamps, and today I'm sharing a card featuring lots of the mermaid stamps from the Under the Sea release, as well as my favorite ocean scene builder stencils, and some other Honey Bee products to create an Under the Sea shaker card. I have a piece of Canson watercolor cardstock here, and I'm wetting the cardstock with this wide brush and then applying some of these watercolors to the paper. I'm gonna start pretty light. Um, down near the bottom, I definitely want it darker, but I'm gonna just kinda of keep working in these watercolors until I get the consistency I want. Oftentimes, I will use Distress Inks or Distress Oxide Inks or something like that, but I really wanted a watercolor look. I wanted to do something a little different. This is pretty wet. I spritzed it with water. I was trying out some different techniques and then I'm drying it and I really did not like how that looked. So I re-wet it and I'm gonna lay down some more watercolor on top here and just kind of keep layering in these colors. Go ahead and heat this. I find that if you keep laying the color on when the paper's wet, it's just gonna run all over the place. So if you wanna build up that color, dry the paper or dry it most of the way, and then you can layer on some more color, which is what I'm going to do. So now I'm really gonna go over this and darken up my paper to get a little bit more of how I want this to look. And that is so much better. I really like how this is looking. Now I'm gonna dry that and take one of the Ocean Scene Builder stencils and through this, I'm gonna use one of the lighter paints through that. And it's okay that it's kind of messy. You can take your paintbrush, water it down. I do not want those sharp lines anyway, so it's totally fine. I am gonna heat this again. Lay just a little bit of water down blend out some of those harsher lines. My heat tool is definitely my best friend with this particular background. It allows me to dry everything quickly so that I can go ahead and layer more. Now I'm gonna take a white opaque paint and go through another one of the stencils. This one has a little bit thinner ray through it and obviously that white is way too dark, but that's okay. Just take a little bit of water, water that down, and this is really starting to look more the way I want it to look. That under the water kind of scene where the light is filtering down through the ocean. Now I went to lay this down and I accidentally had a little water on the back of that. So I'm gonna blend that out, heat this up. I need to blend out a couple of little areas here. And then I'm going to take this magical stencil, my favorite from this. This is what gives it that look of the water hitting the surface of the water and filtering down. And this is barely wet, opaque watercolor paint because I really want the white to show up. So I've just barely wet it. I'm going to place that through the stencil, kind of messy, and you can see that it definitely is giving that underwater look. Again, still a little harsh with the lines, but I can blend that out with a little bit of water. I can go over it a couple more times and really get this to looking the way I want it to get look. Once that's done, once that's dry, I like to lay out the components I'm gonna be using for my card. I have stamp images from not only the Swimming By stamp set, which is where my mermaid and turtle are coming from, but a starfish from Mermaid Song and some seaweed and other images from the Under the Sea stamp set. So three stamp sets here for all of my images. I love mixing and matching the components from the stamp sets. I think you definitely get more bang for your buck that way. Um, you can mix and match and build all kinds of fantastic scenes. Now from that whole panel, I did die cut an A2 double stitched frame from this. This is the second largest from this Honeybee uh, die collection. 
what I like, why I like to do this. This is the shaker frame and the inside of the shaker. This creates that seamless scene so that even though this is a shaker card, even though it's going to be interactive, it's going to be seamless from the frame to the inside. I have a piece of acetate that I've laid on top. This is kind of just to gauge where my greeting is going to go. Another thing that is really important to me when I'm creating a shaker is I like components on the inside and then I like components on the acetate and I like something on the front of the shaker. It gives tons of depth and dimension. One of the reasons I like stamping my sentiment on the acetate is that way it's never covered up by the shaker material. Sometimes that shaker material can cover up your greeting and it's hard to read. This creates a greeting that is right on the front. So I am building the greeting from the Mermaid Song stamp set using some white stays on ink to stamp that right there. I'm also stamping water bubbles and the water bubbles are going to come from the swimming by stamp set as well as the um, under the sea stamp set and they're going to be throughout the whole design. I'm using my mermaid and my starfish so I can gauge where I want those to go since I'm doing all of my stamping on the acetate right now and I don't actually have these images stamped and colored in yet. This is a card where I'm building it from the background up. I'm going to lay my turtle down here because I want a few little bubbles coming up from the bottom from him and they will actually kind of go over the top of the mermaid. The mermaid is going to be on the inside of the card. The mermaid and the shaker material is all that's on the inside. Then the rest of the components are going to either be on top or tucked around the bottom edge of the front of the frame. I'm going to ink up the rest of the bubbles, stamp those, and then I am using a stays on cleaner to get that ink off immediately and clean those up really well. If you don't want any stays on ink to stick to your stamps, I would highly suggest using a stays on cleaner and make sure you use it immediately. I know um, a lot of you don't like the staining on your stamps and this is how I get around that. Now on a white top fold card base, I actually start to, started to put adhesive all over it, but I don't wanna do that. What I wanna do is put adhesive right where that center panel is gonna go and then attach that right there in the middle. So there is the center piece. I want to make sure that's good and stuck down in place. Make sure it's still lining up just right, and it is. Then I'm going to put adhesive on the back of the frame and place the acetate panel right there on the back. So there's kind of what it's going to look like. I still haven't removed the backing paper from the acetate. That's why it looks a little crinkled. Now I've stamped the mermaid from swimming by, the mermaid and the turtle. The seaweed images are all from the under the sea stamp set. And then the little starfish with the cute little eyes and face is from Mermaid Song. And I really felt this card needed that starfish because the greeting reads, you are a star. This works for so many different occasions. I really like cards that work for anything. Um, you always need those birthday cards or um, baby cards, wedding cards, sympathy cards, things like that. But cards that work for any occasion and just because are often my most used cards. And I think this sentiment is one that really works for that. I am coloring in the images with Copic markers. The colors I'm using are shown across the bottom of the screen. That BV00 is a fantastic shadow kind of marker, great for the skin, creates those great shadowed effects. For my mermaid tail here, I am blending two colors together, some oranges or peaches with some kind of peachy pinks. So I'm starting with my oranges and then I'm going to blend the pinks down into this. I wanted something that would stand out against the blues and I thought this was kind of fresh and fun. Especially because her hair is going to be kind of in the purple and aqua spectrum, that mermaid hair. Um, 
I know if you've watched any of my other videos with mermaids, I've kind of gone all over um, with my coloring with their hair, but this is my favorite color combination. Um, the kind of bluish purples into the aquas, that mermaid hairstyle, you can um, Google that online and see people have dyed their hair that way. Um, that's kind of what I was trying to emulate here. And I think it's really fun. These mermaids hair is, I think hair is fun to color anyway, but I think the mermaids from Honeybee Stamps are just so much fun to color. The seaweed I am coloring in some yellow greens, yellow green 01, YG25, 17, and G16. The G16 is going to be a little bit deeper, darker green for some nice um, contrast, deepening and darkening some of those areas on the seaweed. And I'm going to color all of the seaweed images in with these four marker colors. That kind of keeps it nice and easy. They're nice bright green colors. They're going to show up great against the blue of my underwater ocean scene. Now for the hair. The base color for the hair is BG60. It's a very, very light purple. And then I'm going to build that up with B63, 66, and 69. 69 is used pretty sparingly. It's only to darken those areas that are naturally naturally going to be a little bit darker. And then the tip of her hair is going to be aquas, which is BG 32, 34, and 49. That's the darkest color. As I'm coloring this, and I did concentrate most of the aqua towards the tips of her hair, the ends, um, I'm going to pull in some of those lighter aqua colors into some of the lighter highlight areas where the more purpley blue colors are and you'll see that here in a little bit and it just kind of helps blend the colors in so i'm adding some shadows and darkening the aqua here just blend those together where the two colors meet but i think it gives it a little bit more natural feel when you add in some of the aqua into the other areas of the hair i just love how the hair turns out for the starfish, I am using YR0000, YR31, and YR24. Some really awesome yellow-red colors. And then finally, the little turtle is going to be colored in some green shades, some kind of lighter, brighter greens. I tried to go with something a little bit different than the seaweed but still in brighter colors. I didn't want anything too um, dark. These are all kind of bright, fresh, and fun colors. So just coloring in the cute little turtle down here, darkening up all those little spots. The colors I'm using are G82, 94, 99, and 28, and then a little YR31 and 24 for the rest of his turtle shell. Now on the card base, I'm going to attach the mermaid and go around all four sides with two layers of foam adhesive. On the front of the shaker frame, I am going to attach the starfish and then tuck the seaweed and all those little images right here along the bottom edge. I'm going to switch which side that little piece is on. Tuck that turtle down there. Make sure that back piece is really nice and secure. Go ahead and flip that over. I'm going to run a powder tool all the way around the inside edges. Sprinkle in a sequin mix. This is an older mix, I think, from Honeybee Stamps, but anything will work. Um, just something that kind of matches. I'm going to, and I accidentally spilled it all over, which was not very convenient. Then I'm going to remove the backing paper, place the front of the frame in place, and I'm ready to add some finishing details. Now before I did that, I did add some, de some detail to the mermaid tail with a white pen and a Wink of Stella clear glitter brush marker. I added some white dots to her hair. I'm using glossy accents to add detail to the starfish eyes, 
and also the bubbles that I stamped on the front of the shaker frame. So they actually are glossy accent filled white stamped bubbles. Adding a white pin detail to the turtle, to the seaweed. And finally, I'm gonna finish with adding some additional sequins and things from that same sequin mix to the front of the card. I'm using glossy accents and a jewel picker to pick those up and place those in those little glossy accents dots all over the front of the card. And that kind of ties in all the glitz and glimmer, glimmer on the, of the inside of the card with the shaker material with the front. So there's some on the front and there's some on the inside. Fun little finishing detail that adds some sparkle, some shine, and finishes off the card really nicely. Thanks for joining me today for this card featuring Honeybee Stamps, Stamps, Dyes, and Stencils for an Underwater Mermaid Shaker card. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.